finally, the day arrived, and it was our first test at Silverstone after all the preparation. And it was time to go to work. And this is how it turned out. <laughs> yeah. I checked the forecast the night before and I knew there was going to be some rain but what we got I wasn't expecting. I remember looking out the window and looking at the conditions, they were treacherous. I was driving in weather that I was hoping we weren't going to have when we got to the track. Yeah, I knew it was going to be a tough one. It was also my first time in the car since February, so having to adapt to the car, the conditions in one day was going to be really hard. But yeah, I was looking forward to it and I was confident I could prevail. You know, I wouldn't want to be driving at this, let alone racing around a racing circuit at 120 miles an hour. As we um, pulled into the circuit, the sun hadn't come up fully yet, so the track and the area wasn't lit yet, and you know it was gradually opening up to us. About half an hour later, we just come back from signing on at race control, and yeah, back to the garage. When we first arrived in the garage, it was quite eerie. There were only three people there. It was Paul Austin from NHA Motorsports, myself and Brandon. And it was a huge garage. You know, and there was currently just one car, our car there. And um, it just seemed, yeah, it seemed, it seemed surreal. You know, we were prepping to to go around Silverstone. It was a big deal. You know, all our driving career from indoor karting up until this point, it was all for this. And it was coming true. We were there. You know, the, uh, the road to Silverstone, it started to materialize. I was going to sit in the car um, for the first time since February, so yeah, it was a great feeling inside and it was also kind of awkward to get in because, you know, race cars you have to get under the roll cage and stuff. So yeah, I hadn't done that since February, so yeah, it was pretty hard to do that. But yeah, once I got in, I was settled in, you know, got my feet adjusted, seeing my pedals, throttle brake, things like that. Also the steering wheel to see if I could reach the wheel properly, because obviously this number one priority is safety when you're out there and you don't want to be doing anything wrong when it comes to positioning. Um, so yeah, it was a great experience doing that and it gave me some security inside to know that I was ready to deliver out on track. It was 15 minutes till I was out on track, so I had some time to reflect on what I was about to do and also my instructor who was supposed to be with me for the first session wasn't there. Because of, I suspect, the weather, the instructor was slightly late, so the first session, Brandon had to go out by himself. I think that was, in, that was really important for Brandon to do that because, you know, this was the week before the race and, you know, we needed the confidence, the full confidence that, you know, we had this. So my team manager called me up, you know, it was the first session of the day. No instructor, so, yeah, nerves definitely high, but, yeah, walking to the car, I was confident in my ability. Although, you know, I'm a dad in the background and stuff, I... I still like to make sure that all the um, safety issues and the things are, are dealt with. You know, I like to double check on his seat belt and like to double check that his, his, you know, his gloves, his boots, his hands device for his neck is fitted properly. And um, just to reassure myself as well. 
And, um, you know, then I have to step back and leave him in the hands of the team. So, you know, I sat in the car, getting in pretty slowly and carefully to not damage anything. And yeah, I got in, started the engine, and yeah, I knew this was it, you know. My feeling about Brandon being out there on his own is quite mixed. It's like a parent in any other circumstances. There's times when you have to let them go in life, but this was letting him go in a 120 mile an hour machine driving around Silverstone. People would forgive me if I was a little bit worried. The horn for the beginning of the session sounded Brandon was in the car, and um, it was time for him to leave. In karting, Brandon was absolutely fantastic in the rain, but this was a car, you know, this was new. So as I watched him leave, I suppose I could say I kind of prayed that what he had learned in this karting and his previous experiences would, would serve him well as he drove off down the pit lane. The nerves were really high, you know, seeing the actual track in front of me, seeing what I was about to go on. So, yeah, I knew it was going to be a real big challenge. And when you can see it right in front of your face, you know, it makes you feel about it a bit more. You can't see all of the track and you, you're not, you know, you, you're not informed of exactly what's happening. All the time he doesn't appear, you're thinking, has something gone wrong? You know, you don't know how long it's going to take him to get round. I also thought, my goodness, my son's in that car. So when you do see them for the first time, it's almost like seeing a long lost loved one coming back from the wilderness. You know, at that moment, and only that moment, I relax. The grip was very bad due to the weather conditions. The track was very, very slippery. So yeah, turning in the first few corners, it was like, yeah, it was really difficult and I had to adapt to it. As the session progressed, it got increasingly harder to see. So yeah, my vision was getting really, really bad. The lap that I couldn't see, I had to look at the curve to see where I was going, you know, because my windscreen had fogged up completely. So I had no idea where I was going. You know, other cars flying past me and stuff. It was a very, you know, scary experience, but yeah, I was confident I could bring it home, you know, lose my vision to the best of its ability, and yeah, bring the car home. As much as I loved him being out on track and racing round, I couldn't wait for him to get back. And part of me just wanted him to be back and parked up in the garage. And I suppose that's not a very racy attitude, but as a parent, you, you know, you let them go to a certain extent, but you also want them back in your arms. So I sketchily made it into the pitch, you know, I had to use my vision to the best of its ability, you know, getting around the bollards with the pit start, it was really difficult, I thought I was maybe going to hit it, you know, but yeah, I made it through. When he came down the pit lane, that was almost like, your child has come back. Um, yeah, coming into the pits, um, yeah, I came into my pit bay, and emotions wise, I was feeling proud of myself, you know, I felt my team manager would be proud of me, also my dad. Um, but yeah, I was feeling kind of, you know, you know, I finally just did this, you know, and this is what I was been training for for so long. You know, if I was immature and stayed out there, you know, it could have cost me all the preparation I'd done this for, the years of training and stuff, it could have messed it all up. So yeah, I was proud of myself coming in and making the right decision, because I could have been greedy, you know, my first time in the car. But yeah, my team manager was also really proud of me for doing that, and also my father, so yeah, it's great to see a smile on his face as well. It was probably about just before midday when um, 
James, uh, the instructor, turned up. And I don't know why, I, you know, he made me feel really, I was really happy that he turned up. Not that Brandon wasn't doing well, Brandon was doing fantastic. It just gave me an extra boost to my confidence. I, you know, I kind of wanted someone out there with him just to come back and say, you know, no, he's doing perfect out there and everything is fine. So it wasn't a case of, you know, Brandon, I was worried that Brandon needed someone with him. It was, it just gave me a feeling that someone was out there with him and he wasn't out there on his own. But um, of course, that's not racing, it's not what racing's about. But um, it, it just made me feel better, that's all. Second session was up. He got into the driver's seat, you know, just to give me an insight of where the circuit was. So obviously, I had an idea, but I didn't know, you know, the best lines for the wet, for example. That's very complex conditions where different lines can make you go a second faster, for example. So, yeah, it was great to have him do that, give me an idea where I was going. And yeah, three laps he did, and he came in, you know, we stopped over. And then, yeah, it was time for me to do, do my deed and then get out there. So, yeah, I had some more confidence doing that, because I know now I knew where I was going. So, yeah, it was a good feeling. You know, what James was working on with Brandon was fine-tuning Brandon's skills, you know, around the specific circuit and giving Brandon advice, you know, how to get the best out of Silverstone as a circuit. After the second session, it was time to reflect on data as we came in the pits. So yeah, my team manager was really happy with how I did. And yeah, with James, my instructor, it was time to reflect on data, you know, learn where, you know, he was going and see if I, you know, matched what he was, what he was doing. So yeah, I was pretty close to what he was doing. You know, he was obviously a bit faster than me because he's a very experienced racing driver. But yeah, it was good to know that I was somewhere around the pace um, with so much little time in the car. Uh, James also remarked that Brandon's um and I believe his exact words was, Brandon's car control was off the scale. He was becoming the racing driver. And it was um, a proud moment for me to, to see and witness, really. So around midday, lunchtime finally come. Yeah, it was a good time for me to relax, but also reflect on the day, you know, where I can improve on. It was a relief as well, because... Um, you know, I just couldn't wait to get him off the circuit in a silly way, just because, you know, I just, I just wanted him back. We had just finished lunch, yeah, exiting the cafeteria, I was with my dad. One of the funny things was, what initially I thought to be a nightmare, turned out to be a blessing and a hidden gift. And it was the fact that the weather, it started to clear up. This is really good because now we get to practice in both conditions, wet and dry. He was getting an assortment of conditions which would really help him on the race weekend. And one of the other things which was just, just the way it was, was that there were no other Mazda cars there on that day. So there was no, no nobody else was testing in this kind of weather. So, you know, Brandon was really getting a, a bonus out of this. You know, so it all turned out to be quite a blessing, really. So, after what I would say was a successful test day, I had, um, in my head, I'd been carrying this kind of thing that, you know, stage one was to get Brandon to Silverstone. Stage two was to have a successful test day and um, stage three was going to be on the 4th of October and that was going to be the Friday before race weekend. Yeah as the weekend was coming to a close I was really proud of myself of how I did. Yeah team manager was giving me a lot of praise and so was my dad and the instructor 
And yeah, you know, in my heart, I knew I was very confident going to the race weekend's practice sessions the week after. The race weekend was going to be it. This was the make or break. No more rehearsal. You know, and I realised it was racing. This was real. And my son was doing it. He was really doing it.